15 is the exact age a girl loses interest in math. And little does this 15-year-old know is that she's kicked off a domino effect of companies, organizations, institutions, and governments, even dining room conversations, asking one simple question. How do we get more girls interested in math? How do we get more women to pursue financial careers? How do we get more young ladies to take on science and technology? Now, I've been a part of these conversations over the last few months and had some heated debates with friends, and what I've realized is that no one has an answer. No one knows how we can get more women to be involved in science, technology, finance, engineering, because math is the conduit to those industries. And let's be very clear, the industries that I'm talking about, they are running our lives as we speak right now. And with less than 28% of women being represented and 40% are leaving at an annual rate, it's time for us to step back and pay attention and figure out what's really going on. Because if women are less likely to enter, but more likely to leave, I gotta tell you, the numbers aren't looking in the favor of women right now. Now, as a former computer scientist and a systems engineer with the Navy, and I run a business right now where I talk about finance and budgeting on a daily basis, it's been fascinating just being a part of this journey and seeing a young girl being interested in math to becoming a teenager that says, you know what, that math thing just isn't for me. And then being a part of a department in college where every year a woman would leave to now where I work with grown women who cringe when you bring up the four letter word M-A-T-H. <laughs> and then I get a five minute dialogue on how they're not good at math and how they will never be good at math. And this is kind of sad to me because I see the beauty of math. I see the world through math colored glasses and I can see that it can take you anywhere that you want to go. And you couldn't have told me at 15 years old that flipping through a magazine and seeing an ad for programmers for Sega Genesis, yes, I'm showing my age here, <laughs> and, and making a decision right then and there that I was gonna pursue computers in college that I would later be able to travel the world, I would meet some of the most amazing minds when it comes to technology, and I would just have so much fun, and I would be right here today. But girls don't know that. <laughs> but girls don't know that, and I didn't know that unless we start telling them. But this is why I care. And you might be saying, okay, Felicia, that's a good idea. Yay, math. Let's all get on board. And you might be saying in the back of your mind, like, why do I really care? Here's why you care. Because Katherine Johnson was a 15-year-old girl who later became a woman and who was encouraged by her parents, and she helped us to get to the moon. <laughs> Patricia Bath was a 15-year-old girl who later pursued medicine, and because she liked to tinker, she created a device that corrected cataracts so people could have vision. <laughs> Josephine Cochran, a 15-year-old girl, and I worship at her altar every day because she engineered the dishwasher. <laughs> You cannot tell me a dishwasher is not changing your life. That's why we need more 15-year-old girls in technology or to at least help me with the chores around the house. <laughs> but there's a 15-year-old girl that might be sitting next to you or in your house right now that saw her parents go through the Great Recession and never fully recover and is sitting on an idea that can change how we manage finances, but she's about to close the book on it because she's not getting the one thing that we can do and that is support. Now we know it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a community of hardcore supporters who give a damn to make sure a young girl stays encouraged and has confidence to pursue a career in math. And that's the one thing all of the money, all of the industries are spending right now when they do their research, that's the one thing that they cannot figure out, and that is the support from the friends, family, and community that's us. And if we don't do something, we lose something really great in the future. So I have one simple solution, one simple solution. Now, this is me reaching inside of my researchy brain, and I just want to try something at least once or at least for a decade. And you might think I'm a little nutty, but that's okay. I'm up here today. I want us to create a stereotype 
that all girls are good at math from the moment that they are born. Now, I know stereotypes are negative, and you're like, Felicia, I really don't want to do stereotypes. I get it. They are lazy, and it is our brain short-circuiting a way for us to categorize somebody based on how they look, how they represent, or how they present themselves, and so we can interact with them. But I want to use that power of stereotypes because they are powerful, because if the world believes it, we start to believe it. I want to harness this and make sure that we use the power of stereotypes and assumption and use it for the greater good of our girls. And just imagine what would happen if your niece knew that she was great at math, or if we just assume your cousins or your daughters or the women in your lives were great at math. And just imagine if you just start telling your mom, hey, you're great at math, or you tell your grandmother, your daughter, your sister, your best friend, what if you just started telling them right now that they're great at math? What would happen with their confidence? And what would happen if you yelled out the window to your neighbor running and you say, girl, you are great at math? <laughs> now, she may think you're a little nutty. That's OK. Scientists are a little nutty, but that's how you get up on stages like this. <laughs> but you know what's at risk, that if you don't do something, that if we don't do something, we run the risk of women being unwanted, unnecessary, and not needed when it comes to the future innovation that can change our world. Are you willing to risk that? Yeah. Better yet, do you even care? Yes. And if you do, I have one simple task for you. For every woman that says that she's not great at math, I want you to make sure she stands on her two feet and you look her in the eye and you say, yes, you are, and I believe in you. For every young girl that's about to start a business that is pursuing a degree in STEM and is having a hard time, pick up the phone, call her and say, you're great at math and you deserve to be where you are and I am supporting you. For every 15 year old that's about to close the book and say, you know what, math is not my thing, get her the support that she needs so that she can get better. For every 11 year old that is jazzed about her coding club, her robotics team, here's the thing with those girls, they already know they're good at math. Our job is not to screw them up. <laughs> and from the moment that they are born, I just want you to do one simple thing. When they are in your arms, I just want you to remind them every day that all girls are great at math. <laughs>